time positive commenters in the YouTube comment sections I was like why do you always skip the climb up the tree part we want to see that <laughs> so this is for you buddy <laughs> But to, to answer the question, it's monotonous and videos get long as it is. Gotta watch cottonwood bark it, when it's kind of a mature, all these furrows, they're like cement and you'll, you'll slide right out of it. Not fun. So I'm like aiming between the furrows. We've worked on this tree before to make it safer for these neighbors, but they're just tired of it. Tired of dealing with things breaking out of it and wondering when something terrible might happen. So I'll set a rigging line in the top. For some of these limbs that are hard to manage by hand. All of these ways I'm moving are kind of to protect my low back trouble. I don't usually, not rocket science. When you got various troubles with your body then other parts of the body compensate for that. of how do you get up, how do you get your rope in the tree. In this scenario, I'm just climbing up a little at a time and setting it above me. And you'll notice that I'm tied in the whole time. Either one or the other is tied in or both. Right now it's both. But I'll check this, make sure it's all good before I unhook this one go over this limb. Now I'm back to both. You can't just throw your rope over any old thing like that. That'd be an easy toss, but you can tell that it's poorly connected right there. You wouldn't want to just trust that. So I could throw in up there and it might be okay, but just to be safe, I'll probably stay close. I don't do this 
because there's so much noise I can't talk to you anyway. That's why I don't show this part. I want to talk to you, but never quiet enough. <laughs> it's kind of funny that the noise annoys me. <laughs> I'm like in about the noisiest profession there is. See, that's a poor attachment. You, you wouldn't have to pull very hard on that. And this would break. This was just a little water sprout that turned into something bigger. I think, I think now that I see that one, I can trust it a little bit. So a lot of people would probably get a, a uh, line launcher or a throw ball from the ground and just throw something up in here and then go up the rope. And I can't say I blame them. But I'm more of a climb the tree type of guy because of my age and experience. But I do that sometimes, like if it's covered with ivy, I wouldn't bother with this. I would, I would launch a line over the top and then go up the rope. See, I didn't unhook though. This one has got some rod at the base. It's probably good. Like I would unhook if I had to. I would unhook this hook line, but since I don't have to, see once I got tied in here, I just cut that off and then I could just march right past it. Like now I'm gonna unhook. I had to get around this one. Nobody home.
explain what I did here in, in case you're curious about it or in any way interested or even if you're not so this is weak right pretty weak it's, it's decayed on down then you got this weighed out kind of groaning against this foundation and you got this weighed out which I just took off groaning a little bit against rot you know what I mean so but it's more wired to fail this way than it is this way and so as I load this rigging line it's going to be pulling them together where it's stronger this way okay that's why I'm uh, engineering it such then as far as my personal line because you know I'm tied to it if I rig something that causes this to fail I'm tied to it and so that's why I put this here so I'm around this if this failed right here and tore this off I'd be in trouble so I have a backup I have the tail of it coming around this one and so I'm using them together both for the rigging and for rigging myself tying myself in in a way and then I won't you know lower like the you know, weight of the world off of it you'd be surprised what what can be lowered off of it but it comes from um, experience intuition and uh, instinct or something I think it just comes through experience you you learn what you can get away with and what you can't and it's that fine line, you know, uh, the best of us will fail doing something that we trusted, but uh, not this time. This one I can do, I think, without a rope, but not that one. That one's in my way. So perhaps what I'll do is I'll go down there, I'll get this one out of my way on my way to that one, and uh, we'll just take it from there. Just start cutting off everything that doesn't look like a tree that doesn't look like a stump until it's all gone that's a little nerve-wracking to tie into this what I'm tied into but Trust the science, I say with a high cracking voice. See, I, I had to take my rigging line with me, so I just clipped it onto my bridge, you know? It's like another thing. Another thing that would hold you up if, if somebody was holding the other end of it. But you gotta put it somewhere. So.
<laughs> hey, it's having fun, right? It's only a fence. <laughs> All right. That'll learn you. Now get the lowering device. Well placed, though, I must say. <laughs> oh, I meant to say it's only a fence and a cool guy named Damien. <laughs> Is my log was heavier and it lifted his log and popped the rope off and gave him the whole load all at once, which sent him on a, a fun ride to go meet the piece coming down. <laughs> and spun the piece out this way away from the fence. Yeah, that might have looked a little dodgy in America. I mean, I'm up here. I've got it mid-tide, so it's going to want to hunt me too. So I'm hiding back here. <laughs> well, you're slowly... <laughs> well, you're lifting a log and and launching yourself toward a falling tree. You did, you did good uh, battling the, uh, that thing in the moment, but the planning was a little dodgy. I could tell you were just barely... You were just lazy enough to not go get the lowering device. Either that or you didn't want to make me wait. <laughs> Let's rig this piece off of a rotten top, really big, with a poor lowering device made of a log that rises up as the man rushes forward. Perfect. <laughs> but the beaver pelt harness will save us. <laughs> Customer watching from the garden. That's another thing. After I get like two more limbs off, we could just pull the top, the whole top, with set everything on it off. This is another one I'll I'll be cutting and doing a little bit of hiding from it. So hold on to it at first, rather than just.
so much better with a lowering device, eh? He just stood there so calm. And I was doing the, here we go around the mulberry bush thing. <laughs> Damien said he feels like right now on that piece he was laying in bed listening to ocean noises and the other one was like slipknot. <laughs> So YouTube, that was a classic thing to be aware of when, when you're mid-tie, when they come off, they can shoot into you. So you use the tree as, as like a shield. That's why I was spinning around. I was just keeping the tree between me and this action. It's a common thing, but if you don't know it, you don't expect it. You're gonna get like skewered right through the brisket. Yeah, I mean, people die like that, so this is no small little bit of advice. Another dodgy American. so that I don't get impaled by Damien the Impaler. Yeah, the other tree boogered us up. No, it'll come out.
This is a 16 inch bar YouTube. It's important YouTube if you're using your tie-in for work positioning and you're cutting the face cut, you just do not want to forget to take it out before you do the back cut or it's game over. And some would say don't be tied in above to the tree you're cutting when you make the face cut. And that's also a good plan. Either don't do it or don't forget. You got a pretty good leverage. So don't let him break the tree off or something. Damien has it through a block there and go back to the skid steer because it's a lot of back weight. I, 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 I put like a snipe with a little bit of a Dutchman on the other side so that when it gets over it'll kind of go like it'll kind of it'll kind of dodge to the right a little it'll be way committed before that ever happens what i'm going to have you do is is tighten it up a bit and then i'm going to work one side of the back cut all the way to the hinge and then i'm going to step over to the other side of the back cut and it'll be kind of a cripple cripple pull All right, give me a little. That's probably good, huh? That's probably enough, because I'm just gonna make half the back cut. Then I go to the other side. So give me that rope back. And I think we can do the rest in one piece, right? Looks like 
Base cut was almost open too far. Yeah. How far in front of the fence is it, Danny? Like a hair? Uh, <laughs> you guys did a good job. A hair is as good as a mile? <laughs> <laughs> or a hair is as good as an inch. <laughs> much proudness and he showed mama his his latest artwork and he had scratched it in to the side of my dad's Jeep my dad has a nice Jeep scratched it in a little stick figure on the passenger door with a smiling face he didn't have any arms it was a guy with a body that just went down the legs and a big smile. And he thought that that was a perfect place to hang that, that artwork for Grandpa. I mean, save him the trouble of having to tape it to the wall. Just scratch it in there. I think it's quite interesting that the perspective of a person from one to another can be so different. And uh, I couldn't help but be like, man, you lucky grandpa. He didn't scratch it in the side of my car. You know, a little bit lucky, at least. Somebody on Instagram, I put that post up there and somebody said, I probably wouldn't be thrilled, but I probably wouldn't get rid of it either. Like Mater on cars. He likes his dents type of thing. Another guy said he would he would pinstripe it and like make it show up even more. I thought that was a cool idea. John Jaden's artwork. Yeah. Where'd you see that? <laughs> Somebody was showing it here. Oh yeah. Isn't that a hoot? I love your your attitude though. Yeah. And a smile on it. <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do? He picked Grandpa's vehicle because he loves Grandpa and he wanted Grandpa to. Grandpa didn't have a fridge to put it. He came up to that. Uh, he came up to Heather holding that rock. I was in the upstairs looking down from the window upstairs, and he was like, "Look at this, holding the rock." You got to see my art. Uh-oh, it was done with a rock? <laughs> How could, good could this be? Sure enough, he goes up to this mint Jeep Wrangler and just, or whatever that thing is. What is that thing? Is it a Wrangler? I guess I'm not a Jeep connoisseur. Neither is Jaden. <laughs> making this for a aircraft ATC air traffic controller in Dubai and um, I think he started watching my stuff well he's an arborist but then he saw me flying and 
you know, we look up to those air traffic control guys. So this is actually camel hide. And it's black, white, green, red. And I'm making it in the configuration of the United Arab Emirates flag. So this here, the underside of the leather is going to go up against the skin. There's a nice soft feeling there. I'll show you more of it later. It's kind of a very interesting project. Camel hide. I would have never got to do this if I hadn't uh, chosen this life. This is random though. This is this is random.